Hey everybody, welcome to Airsoftology Mondays, the Q&A show here, the show that answers your questions, helps you out in a pinch, and also has started to pick some really good photos. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs, that's right. I wanna jump right now on this one, because last week I did kind of a call or a shout out or whatever for all of you guys and gals out there with the patches. Any patches you've ordered, wanted some action shots, some cool things. So I'm gonna lead with that this week. Real quick before we jump into questions, so just hang tight, we're gonna get through this. Um, so you really pulled it out starting using the hashtag, hashtag Airsoftology for all the patches, and it could be any of them, like the, the new Corgi I just got in a couple weeks ago. If you guys haven't picked one of these up there in the store, links in the description below. But uh, I wanna give the first one out, and before I say this user's name, I had to use this photo for the first one. Now again, real Corgi's not required, just understand, I'm gonna phonetically spell what I'm doing here. His name is Fa King Lamb. Uh, that is actually the username, <laughs> and uh, it's not spelled the way you think it is. And it's just a shot of him and his two corgis, Turbo and oh man, I forget the name of the other one. Anyway, they are both adorable, laying right next to his pack. Right there, you can see in the photo. I had to highlight this as the first one since the corgi patch just came out. So anyway, if you guys want to get your picture out here of action shots of any patch, anything you've done with the Airsoftology with the patch or something, put a patch on, it's on you, on a something, have be creative, have fun, just make it a cool shot, and use the hashtag, hashtag Airsoftology, and I will be using, I'll be looking for that every single week and be highlighting one Instagram post, again, this needs to be up on Instagram, uh, I'll be highlighting one Instagram post every single week, and again, it can be any patch, it doesn't matter. Also, real quick too, I wanna give you guys an update, I am headed to Buffalo Battlegrounds on the 20th, thing. I look at my calendar, which is right here, the 21st and the 22nd, that's right, I keep my calendar, so you guys have eagle-eyed, you can probably see where I'm headed next. Uh, the 21st and the 22nd, Buffalo Battleground in Buffalo, New York. I will be there for two days with Classic Army, doing a big Classic Army event. So if you guys are anywhere in that Great Lakes area of New York, come by, visit. I would love to see you. In fact, I'm gonna try to get out and get some trigger time in too, since it's a two-day event. I'll actually be able to get a little little pew-pew time in. So come on out and just shoot me, because I know you guys wanna do that. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get to hear what you're really here for right now, and that's your question in the Tipman mail call. Turtle Eater writes, at my local field, there's no FPS limit for snipers. So there are people running around with 700 feet per second snipers. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, let me start by saying, I got my start at a field where we used to have no limit games. Now again, these were invite only, they were mature players, this was not open to everybody, and if you could build it, you could bring it. Um, my experience with those games, I never had an issue. But again, it was early on in Airsoft, Airsoft fields were not commercial like they are today and everywhere, and it was a very small group of people. In fact, it was a whole lot of fun because it kept everybody above board. That said, these days, I think that is pretty ridiculous to have fields where you have that, especially if you can't restrict the players. I mean, you really could hurt someone. I mean, if that, I I would have to think, and this is me just making an assumption, if the field allows limits that high, they might not police their rules very well on minimum engagement distance, what they call MED, which is the distance you have to be away from your opponent before you can pull that trigger. If you guys don't know what MED is, that's what it is, MED or minimum engagement distance. Usually in sniper rifles, it's 100 feet, so it gives you some time for that power to, to kind of dissipate and before you hit your target. Within that, you have to switch over to your pistol. If they allow pretty much open FPS, and this is a full open field with all ages players, I think that's pretty bad. It's not very safe, especially for newer players, younger players, things like that. That's my opinion. Again, I wanted to tell you guys, I started off playing that way. I think it's great for mature players who want to do a private game, and that's what you want to do. I think that's the only application. And that said, now I may or may not do it again. Actually, you know, I would. We had a good experience. But going to a real sanctioned field, that is it. I will also tell you this. If your field has limits that high, they do not have insurance. Flat out. So you are running very risky playing at that field because they there's no insurance company out there that's gonna allow you to have a 700 feet per second sniper rifle. That is just not going to happen. So keep in mind, and please be mind, the field I'm at now, or the field I was mentioning my field earlier, the limits are, are very different these days. But uh, in mind of that, I would be very careful considering if you got injured out there, I, I don't know, a lot of things going on. That's just my thoughts, just wanna throw it out. I don't know what the field is, I don't wanna know what the field is, but definitely if they're allowing guns that hot, 
you're not gonna have insurance. There's not an airsoft insurance company, at least in the United States, that allows fields to run guns that high. So anyway, just my thoughts on that. Please be safe. I probably, well, probably, I wouldn't play there just for the sake of lack of insurance because of that, especially if it's an open game like that. And also, I wanna know your guys' thoughts. Do you have higher limits at your fields? There are insurance companies that allow a lot higher limits than what are out there. I mean, above 400, and that's actually okay in some of them. But uh, what are your limits in your fields? Is it 350 uh, with the 0.20 gram BB? Is it 400? Uh, if it's indoor or outdoor, is it 300 or something different? I know different countries have different rules. Let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to be definitely reading all those throughout this week. Shoot to miss right, I just started making airsoft gameplays and I'm gonna have trouble growing. I recently went to a CQB field and got gameplay, but I don't want to post good footage for 200 views. I feel like purchasing more cameras as a waste as I currently have two. At what point do you really need to think about things? All right, so this is the tough one. I, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're saying I don't want to post good gameplay for only 200 views. Remember, YouTube is permanent. The video I make, this video right here, will go on. It will live and it will continue to get views over the years. Uh, I would absolutely post it. Subscribers are not gonna hit that subscribe button to your channel unless you have a good chunk of back content and it needs to be good. You gotta give them a reason to subscribe. If you only have three or four videos, I'm probably not gonna hit that subscribe button, honestly, because I'm like, well, I'd like to see some more. I'd like to see something. But if you have 20 or 30, I'm like, hey, there's some good meat here. I'm gonna go watch this channel. I wanna see what else he does. I'm gonna hit that sub button. So it is important. You may right now feel like you're giving away all those great video content. You wanna save that for later, but your editing style is gonna change. You're going to improve. Just, I could give you the Pepsi challenge, go way back in my catalog. I think I'm like over 600 videos now, but go way back to like some of the old Airsoftology news programs. It's, it's cringeworthy. It's pretty bad. And back then I thought, man, I'm so good. I'm great in front of the camera. And yeah, I go back and watch it and it's totally cringy. So anyway, just keep that in mind. You're going to get better and you're gonna need to give your subscribers, uh, your potential subscribers, some reason to press that sub button. So good content is good, whether it's your first video, your 500th video, or your 5,000th video. You definitely wanna keep doing that. Maccabee Luke 2236 writes, Hey Jonathan, I was wondering what the longest time you've gone without getting hit in a game while still being in the heat of it. Also, how long have you gone without getting hit in a Milsim game? For some games, I have, I don't know. I mean, if you're playing like CQB, I'm gonna get hit, guaranteed. So maybe five minutes, maybe. You know, I play, tend to play rather aggressively. I like to play up front and push, so I do get shot a lot. You know, get up there, get the angles, get some kills for CQB. For outdoor fields, I play a little more midfield, so I'll usually run like a DMR maybe or a support gun. For those, I tend to last a lot longer because I'm supporting my team. I have had, uh, you know, a, a full hour scenario where I never died on those games. And then there's some that I've died within minutes, <laughs> like minutes of starting, like, oh, I did something stupid and I've died over and over again. Um, there have also been Milsim events. There has been a Milsim event that I played the entire day and did not die. Now it was mainly outdoors. It was a lot of marching and moving from location to location and not a lot of trigger time. So you theoretically can absolutely go all day. I mean, I got into a few firefights, but if you're playing with it as a squad, you're moving, you're flanking, you're doing all that, you very well can survive. And especially if you play a support class, like maybe a medic. I think I was playing medic in that one. I think it was for most of the game I was a medic. So that explains that I'm trying to keep myself alive as best as possible. So yeah, those are all different things for me. Um, it just depends on the game time. Like I said, if it's indoors, I'm dying fast, guaranteed. Uh, if it's a big Milsim event, it could be hours. It could be at least an hour. Or I've played some games where I've been just destroyed within 15 minutes at a Milsim event, like whistle blows and you just get ripped apart. Anyway, um, actually I'm curious with this question also, since I asked something earlier, what's yours? Have you made like these ultimate kill streaks? Have you like gone through and played CQB and got, like a 20 player kill streak and never died? I wanna hear about it in the comment section below. In fact, if you've got a video about it, put it down there where you guys have played and you've done that, you caught it on your GoPro or your Contour or whatever. I, I wanna see it. I wanna see like some epic kill streaks. So yeah, drop them down there and hey, you know, maybe I'll get it highlighted in the next video of the week. Skyfox plays, right? Question, for all those who live in less enlightened countries, i.e. Australia, are tourists allowed to play at fields in America? If so, what age limits are there? Absolutely, it is fair game. You can come with your passport and play no problem. Most fields will let players 
uh, 13, some 12, some even 10 years old. Uh, I think at 13, you're pretty safe to play most fields. 14, you're definitely safe. Uh, to go to the bigger ops, like bigger Milsa ops, some allow 16, but most are 18 and up if you want to come over here and play a big Milsim event. Uh, some of that's due to insurance. Most of the time, though, that's due to where it's being played. The facility is a training facility or something along those lines where they're going to want you to sign a waiver and be able to be responsible for yourself. Some are even on government land. Um, some of those might be restricted for non-U.S. citizens. I know when you do play at fields like uh, when I used to play at Irene at Fort Knox, those were not allowed. You had to be a U.S. citizen to be able to play there because you're on an active military base. So they're going to want to kind of know who you are. They're, you're on a list before you show up. So those are things that are very important as well. And they do check your ID when you come through the gate and it's a military police or it's a private security company contracted by the government who is actually actively checking your ID and making sure it matches and it has to be a U.S. government issued ID. So yeah, that's kind of the whole range. But if you want to just come here and play, especially in Australia where you pretty much almost have no airsoft at all because of the restrictions of firearms and airsoft bundle in that, um, come on over and play. If you're those age limits, you will be able to find fields to play all over the country that will hit pretty much any age limit. All right, that's it for questions this week, which means it is time for the Code Red Headsets video recommendation of the week. And this one comes from a channel I don't think I've ever highlighted. I might have. I might have a long time ago. Silo Entertainment. And this one is some gameplay. He's been playing with Clean Shot. So he is overseas here, overseas from me at least, here in the United States. And uh, he and Clean Shot are actually playing a game, both running as snipers, and it's good sniper gameplay. But it's not just about the sniper rifle. It's about this pistol he has. It's a Marui High Kappa Extreme, and it's the full auto version, 1,500 rounds a second, which averages to be, what, 25 BBs? Or 1,500 rounds a minute, 25 rounds a second, which is fast for a full auto pistol. I mean, that's up there with some of the higher stock AEGs running a pretty healthy LiPo. So you get some good gameplay of him getting long shots and some up-close shooting with the pistol. In fact, he's a big channel, actually a really big channel, and one that I was surprised when I checked it out, I did not hit the sub button to, which is crazy. I mean, he's over like 350,000 subscribers. I know I try to highlight the small channels, but every now and then I like to drop in on somebody like this that's just flown under my radar that I know I've seen his videos before, but have just never hit that sub button. So anyway, if you guys haven't checked it out and you want to add another sniper gameplay with some close quarter action battle, the good mix, good narration, all in and good editing, check out Silo Entertainment. Of course, as always, I have a link in the description below over to the video so you can check it out. And if you like it, hit that sub button. Well, guys, that's it for this week. As always, thank you so much for being so cool and hanging out here. And if it's your first time here or you don't know how it works, it's simple. If you want to get a question on this show or you have a video of the week you would love to highlight, whether it's your channel or a favorite channel you watch, it's super simple. You put those down in the comment section below and make sure to vote up the favorites. I do read every single question and submission throughout that week and I will get them on the next show. Now, I won't be able to get yours on every time because we only have like three or four or five questions, but be persistent. I do pay attention to the ones that repeat and then do my best to get them on the show. Also, don't forget, if you guys want to get your photo highlighted, it's on Instagram, hashtag Airsoftology. Just have a patch or something Airsoftology related. Put it up there, throw that hashtag on, and I'll be digging through every single week to get those highlighted so you can get a little shout out at the beginning of the video. So guys and gals, until next time, go out, play some Airsoft, have some fun, but no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.